Hi, how's it going? I'm Rob, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve a 4x4 Rubik's Cube, also known as the Rubik's Revenge. Solving a 4x4 is a lot like solving a 3x3, but there are some basic principles and algorithms I recommend you learn first on a 3x3 before attempting a 4x4. If you don't know how to solve a 3x3, I offer a tutorial on my page that goes through how to solve it in detail for beginners. There's two main differences I'd like to go through between the 3x3 and the 4x4. If you look at a 3x3, it has one fixed centerpiece per side that never moves. That means that yellow will always be opposite white, green will always be opposite blue, and red will always be opposite orange. If you have an East Sheen cube, then opposite red you will have purple instead of orange. This does not matter. I would like you to, however, memorize those color pairs as it will prove useful when you're placing the centers on the 4x4. So let's look at the 4x4. If you see, the center of the 4x4 is composed of four different pieces. What that means is that the centers of the 4x4 can actually move and they're not fixed in place, which means that you're going to have to actually place them before you can continue and solve the cube. We'll also notice that it has eight edges per side as opposed to four on the 3x3. That means that they can split up and you're going to have to pair them with their complementary piece before you can actually solve the cube. Once you pair the edges and fix the centers, you'll get something that resembles a 3x3 cube that has been mixed up. This can basically be solved as a 3x3, with the exception of something we'll call parity, that we'll go over later. Some of the notation I'd like to go over for the cube um, is because there are four layers on the cube, so it has what we call inside layers. This is an outside layer, and this layer here would be called an inside layer. That's called the inside up layer. So if I told you to turn the inside up layer clockwise, the inside up layer we're going to denote as little u. The uh, outside up layer is denoted as big U. So if I told you to turn the inside up layer clockwise, that would look something like that. You could turn it two different ways. I find it easier to kind of turn that like that and then turn the top back. If I told you to turn both right faces clockwise, that would look something like that. That would be denoted as big R, little r in parentheses. If I told you to turn both up faces, the inside up and the outside up face counterclockwise, that would be denoted by big U, little u in parentheses, followed by an apostrophe. And that would look something like that. And of course, if I just told you to turn the right outer face clockwise, that would look something like that. If I told you to turn the up face count, um, 180 degrees, that would look something like that. That's just basic notation from learning how to solve a 3x3. Three three. Now we'll go on to solve the centers. Okay, so for placing the centers, it does come in handy if you know that color pairing scheme that I just talked about. Because this step is fairly intuitive, you're not going to have to know any algorithms. What I first try to do is I try to place three centers in a clockwise direction on the cube. Uh, that's a total of 12 pieces. The centers I like to use are red, white, and blue because it's easiest for me to memorize, but you can choose any three you like as long as you place them in the same position and direction as they exist in the solved cube. So let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, because red, white, and blue exists um, in the clockwise direction on the solved cube, you can place it like that. Um, you can also do red, green, and white if you wanted to. You could not flip these two and place green, red, and white in a clockwise direction. You would not be able to solve that cube. So there are three main things which you have to do when solving the centers. You're going to have to make a 2 by one block. You're going to have to join two 2 by one blocks. And you're going to have to join a single piece occasionally with what I like to call a three-piece L. So the first thing I like to do is to create the red center and work from there. So what I like to do is I like to find a red piece that is on the front and join it with a red piece that is on the top. What you have to do is look at the relative position of this red piece. It's in the lower left. What you're going to have to realize is that in order to join this piece to that piece, this piece has to be in the lower right. So if to, they're both in the same position right now. This is the lower left of the top face. This is the lower left of the front. You're not going to be able to join it. Also, if, you, if it was there, you wouldn't be able to join it either. If it was up there when you, when you cross it, um, it will be diagonally. So what you have to do is, this is the lower left, you have to position this in the lower right. Then when you flip it up, it will form a 2 by 1 block. So now we have one 2 by 1 block, we want to form another one. Actually, we have one already solved for us here. So in order to join it, 
we put them in opposite sides of the cube. So this is vertically on the right side of the cube. Let's put this one vertically on the left side of the cube. Then we could turn it 180 degrees and join it together to make a 2 by 2 red center. What we want to do next is to place the white center. It could be any position that you want as long as it's next to the red. So let's use this position. We have a piece here in the front and a piece in the top. And they are in the right positions that we want to in order to join them. Um, so this one's in the lower left and this one's in the lower right. So we can join them. And you want to make sure that you're not disturbing that red center that you just formed. And we're not going to. So we just formed a white 2 by one block. Now we want to form another one. So here's one in the front face and here's one in the top. This one is in the upper right this one is in the lower left. So what we have to do is make this one in the upper left. So we turn the top. Now this one can join up with this one. But you have to be careful because when you turn it, it's going to mess up this red center. So once you form it and you see it's horizontal like that, you turn it vertically like that. Then you could put these two back down and you resolve that red center. So now we have a two by one white block here and we have another 2 by one white block there. What we do is we can bring this one up here. In order to do that, uh, we can't just join it by putting this one on the left side and this one on the right side. Because as you'll see when you turn it, you messed up the red completely. So what you do in this case is you put them in the same side. So that you put them both on the right side in the same plane uh, or the same layer if you can call it. Uh, so right now they're in the same layer. So we flip it and we uh, kick those two out. So we kick those two out, we turn the top 180 degrees, and now when we turn them back, it will be right next to it and it will bring the red along with it. So now we have the red and the white. Now we need to place the blue. When you have two pieces like that, diagonally in the same face, what you do is you take the one in top in the upper, in the upper layer and you bring it to the top face, like that. Then you look at the position of this one. This one is in the lower, uh, lower left. So this one is now in the upper right. You want to bring it down to the lower right. So you bring it down to the lower right. Ignore this piece here. We'll be uh, forming a two by one block with that later. So then we bring it down and we formed another two by one block. Now we want to form another two by one blue block. So here's one piece and that's in the front face and here's another piece in the top face. This one is in the upper right and this one is in the upper left which is good. So when you join them, you have to also be sure that you're not disturbing that red center here. So when you join it and you see it horizontal, all you got to do is turn it vertically and then you could pop this back down to fix the red center. So now we have another two by one uh, blue block. So we have the red, the white, this has to be the blue center. So now what we have to do is again, because this red is going to interfere with us just flipping this up like that, we have to put them on the same side. So this blue is on the left side, we'll put it on the right side like the one in the top face. So we'll put it in the right side like that. So now when we bring this up and kick that out and flip it around 180 degrees, we can bring this back like that and it will join up with the one that just kicked it out. So now we have the red, the white, and the blue solved. So now that color pairing scheme comes in handy. So opposite the blue goes the green. So here we have a three piece L as I like to call it. Now in order to join uh, the, the green piece, the solo piece that's uh, alone, which is right here, with this three piece L, we have to get this, um, this piece that's alone into the bottom right or the bottom left. So right now it's on the right side, so all we gotta do is bring it down to get it on the bottom right. And what we need to do now is you need to look at the corner of this L. The corner of the L is here. It's in the upper right. You need to get it in the same position that it is, uh, that this piece is here in the front face. So this is in the lower right. So you turn this until that corner piece is also in the lower right. Now what you can do is you could bring this, uh, turn the right face, and you meet up this piece with that lone piece. This is a pair here, and this is kind of a lone piece. So you bring it up and you match it with that lone piece. Then you turn it vertically. Now if you kicked it out and these two pieces were on the right side, you want these two pieces to be on the left side. So when you bring these two pieces back down, it will meet up. So now we have the green. 
Now what we want to do, um, opposite the red goes the uh, purple in my case. You might have orange. So uh, if I want to join these together, what I have to do is, again, put them in the same plane. And then when I bring these up to meet with those, I kick them out, turn the top 180 degrees, and then I bring the right back down. So now, as you'll see, uh, if you had something similar to mine, that you should have all the centers should be solved. Uh, this is pretty intuitive, so you're going to have to play around with it a little bit if you didn't get a case that's very similar to mine. Uh, but those are the basic cases that you're going to ge be getting. The, uh, the L with the one piece, or basically just two of those um, two by one blocks that you'll have to join together. Um, so the next, next step, we're going to be solving these edges. We're going to be pairing them up.